Reaction mechanisms, PLOC. Well, I'd like you to consider this reaction, the one between propane and oxygen. It makes carbon dioxide and water. Balancing shows that one molecule of propane will have to react or collide with five of oxygen. It's unlikely to happen this way. Reactions usually happen in two particle, maybe three particle collisions. A six particle collision is unlikely. So although we're seeing the overall reaction, what's going to happen is many simpler reactions. Let's take a, an example where I just use letters. A and B make C and D. And let's say one of those products, C, reacts with something else, E, and that makes some more stuff, F and B. Let's say that F that got made in step two reacts with chemical A, which we've already seen once before, and it makes G and D. Whoa, these are three steps, but they add up to an overall reaction. Let's have a look. A is used, and it's used again in a later step. This shows up as 2A in the overall reaction. Well, B is used, but is produced again, and C is produced, but is used again, and they'd end up on either side, so we don't show them. The things that are consumed are E, and produced are D is produced twice, actually, and G. So the overall reaction is shown there. It's as slow as the slowest step, the rate determining step. The overall rate of the reaction is controlled by the slowest reaction. Well, we have reactants, A and E, things that you've probably seen before. And we have products, things that get made. Reactants get used up, products get made. Reaction intermediates, those are things that are produced and then later on, before it's over, consumed. A catalyst is used and then before the end, it's remade again. Four different kinds of things. Let's, let's have a look at the energy curve, the potential energy for the three steps. Three steps means three bumps. The slowest step will have the highest energy uh, and the fastest step will have the lowest activation energy. The rate determining step is always the highest bump on the reaction. It's, yes, here we go. Let's, let's try another example. X and Y make Z and T, say. One of those products, T, reacts with something else and makes some more stuff. Um, R and S, for example, I don't know. Then R from the second reaction is, uh, oh, then, then let's see, X and Y, oh, Z and, Z and Y are used to make X and T, and S and J makes Y and T. This is a very complicated one. I'm not sure we should be doing it. Well, let's have a look. X's, they get used and then remade. That makes them catalysts. Uh, same with Y. Um, Z is produced, but then consumed again. That makes it a reaction intermediate. The same for T and S. It's V and Y that get used up. Um, R is produced and T is produced. Uh, also, J gets used up. The overall reaction is just what's left over after we've removed, removed the reaction intermediate and the catalyst. This reaction overall is slow, and since there are four steps, there will be four potential energy bumps. The uh, slowest step is step one, the rate determining step, so it will be the highest. Let's try a real example, methanol. This is methanol here, and if we add acid to it, which we can represent as H+, interestingly, they will combine to form an intermediate, CH3OH2+. It turns out that studies show that this intermediate immediately breaks down, forming water, and another uh, species there, CH3+. That CH3+, is also an intermediate, and it reacts with vinegar, or acetic acid, to make a complicated looking species here, uh, very funny looking. That third species also falls apart, and this time it makes uh, an ester, which might have a very nice fragrance, an H+. Now, I, this is all given. I've given all of this to you. I'd like you to be able to identify the reactant, the reaction intermediates, the catalyst, and the products. Well, reactants will simply be consumed. There they are the, in yellow. Um, methanol and 
uh, acetic acid are consumed. The blue, uh, no, no, see the uh, the green products, water and uh, that ester that's formed there. In pink, we have uh, three species that are produced and then consumed before the reaction ends. And finally, there's the catalyst, H+. Speaking of catalysts, let's just finish this with a look at the potential energy curve for a reaction, comparing not having a catalyst and having a catalyst. The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is exothermic. It, as every reaction does, has an energy barrier. The activation energy is the difference in energy from the reactants to the top of the curve. Here is the catalyzed reaction. What does a catalyst do? It lowers the activation energy by improving the geometry. In green, we have the un uncatalyzed reaction, and I'd like you to be able to identify that uh, on, a, on a graph. And in pink, we have the catalyzed reaction. A catalyst lowers the activation energy by providing uh, an alternate reaction mechanism with better geometry. And that means lower energy is needed. Here we go. A big mouthful coming up. A catalyst is a species that speeds up the rate of a reaction by providing an alternate reaction mechanism which has a lower activation energy and also which is not consumed in the overall reaction. Well, that's it. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.